All right, movie of the year. Let's go. <laughs> All right. Hi, everybody. Uh, so we're back again to talk about the big new Spider-Man movie, Across the Spider-Verse, part one. Um, okay. <laughs> oh, part, part two, technically. No, technically it's, no this it's, is part one. It's a well, sequel, but it's part one. Well, it's it, it's the second in a trilogy. But it's it's called part one. <laughs> I win on semantics. Ha ha. Uh, <laughs> okay. Congrats. <sighs> Thank you. I'll take this win. I need what I can get. <laughs> uh, so anyway, yeah. So this is Across the Spider-Verse, which is obviously a sequel to Into the Spider-Verse, uh, which is also probably still the best Spider-Man movie of all time. Uh, Easily, but, this, yes. but at this point, it is a close competition between this and its sequel, Across the Spider-Verse, uh, which wi- very, very wisely does not try to be the first movie again. Um, that was very smart. Uh, so yeah, without... Uh, I'm sure a lot of you guys have already seen this by the time this review gets out there. I'm still going to try to avoid spoilers in case you haven't, just in the broad strokes. Um, and then, of course, we'll probably get in more nitty degrees. We talk about that. But if we start getting to spoilers, we'll give you a heads up because if you have, if you want to go to this movie fresh, I definitely don't want to give anything away. Um, so, yeah, this movie takes place about a year after the events of the last movie. Uh, Miles is 16 now, and he's doing he's doing the typical Spider-Man struggle of trying to balance uh, his personal life with Spider-Man life. And he's failing miserably at it as Spider-Man does um, while he is in there. He gets, and I'm not giving away anything that's not in the trailer. Um, at one point, uh, Spider-Gwen from the previous movie has found a way to tra- uh, traverse. Yep. She's got the jacket on uh, traverse <laughs> dimensions and goes to Miles's dimension um, seemingly to ha- uh, just kind of just hang out and reconnect. Um, but like sooner than is expected, he gets roped into basically the spider, the spider league. I don't know what the act, I forget what the actual term they gave it for. Uh, but basically um, something. is like an interdimensional uh, group of Spider-Man from all different dimensions. I'll come up to try to make sure that the uh, dimensions stay secure, basically. Uh, then other shenanigans happen, which causes the spider people to turn on miles. And that becomes a race against time. And a lot of spider people from all over, literally all over, like every Spider-Man piece of media you can think of, it is in here, and it's kind of amazing. Yeah, uh, uh, it, uh, it's a uh, blink and 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 you miss it. And I almost want to see this again just to try to catch more. Uh, I'm sure you you probably caught much more than I did, being more well versed. No pun intended. <laughs> my partner is trying to sneak into the room and she's failing miserably and she has this look on her face that's hysterical uh <laughs> i won't embarrass her any more than i already have but <laughs> anyway uh i'll debate whether i take that out in post um I think it's funny. Um, anyway, so yeah, um, without going to spoilers right now, I think this really goes to say that as far as character beats and story and progression goes, this is a, this takes in a very, very smart direction. Um, it keeps the characters moving forward. It does exactly what it needs to do to make sure these characters keep growing while also expanding on the ideas that introduced in the first movie. Um, not just in like, oh, look, they're more spider people now, but it actually dissects the overall themes from the first movie, which is something I made a video about, and I'll talk about when we get into spoilers, because goddamn, it was this movie was very validating because people said I was crazy for my theory in the last movie, and I was fucking right. Um, I was dead fucking right, and you won't fucking I told you so. Um, anyway, um, so obviously, like how uh, if, uh like Haley Steinfeld is back as Spider Gwen. Um, and then we have Oscar Isaac as Spider-Man 2099 in this one. He's like the big new character in this one. Uh, Miguel. Miguel, yeah. Uh, he could play Spider-Man 2099, who is like the future Spider-Man from another dimension. Um, there's, he's actually one of two that appears. Like there's also like Spider-Man 2135 or something like that. That also shows up. Um, but anyway, all that's to say is that story-wise, this is excellently placed. The animation is beyond phenomenal. Um, it it really does feel like they have thousands of artists with very different styles of animation that are clashing together, but still somehow not conflicting with each other. Um, 
in a match that is massively impressive. Um, but I've done a lot of talking. You say things now. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I just love this, this movie. It is smart. It is stunning. It, it, it is expertly paced and scored. It, it, I'm not going to sound as articulate or informed um, on on this one as you. This is is up your alley. I'm I'm more of, of a novice. You, uh, you are the comic nerd, <laughs> so <laughs> us. Uh, so I I can 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 talk about it as a movie and and say what I liked, but I don't think that will accurately. Uh, express how much I enjoyed this uh, and yeah. the different animation styles, the different colors, the different cameos, the the different cultures that are depicted. Oh, the, it, it, it's a sensational feast for the eyes. And, oh, yeah, totally. and, uh, I, this and uh, the Dungeons and Dragons movie are easily my my two favorite movies that I've seen this year so far. Yeah, I think mean, those go choices. Um, yeah, and like I said before, the writing is sharp as nails. Um, this feels like there's polished to a t- like with fine tooth comb. Um, no frame of animation is out of place. No line is out of place. Everything serves a purpose. Um, this is construct. This is mastercraft filmmaking. Mm. Um, it's. it's- a thing of experts it yeah. uh, I, it it is art it it is philosophy it uh it is goddamn near perfect yeah honestly i agree um so that's enough praise for the film so uh I can, we can't say too much else again with spoilers so if you haven't watched the movie obviously 10 out of 10 go watch it. it's a phenomenal film yeah. um so yeah it'll, this will be probably like on my top three if not top, number one for uh, mm-hmm. this year so far I, I don't see much topping this um but anyway so that being said spoiler warnings from here on out this is where we get into spoiler stuff um so yeah spoiler stuff um one thing i want to talk about because this is something i like i didn't catch this at first but i read it after the fact it's like oh they're fucking right um for those who have not watched my DuckTales and Spider-Verse video, go back and watch it. It's, it's one of my personal favorites that I've made, the video essays that I've made, at the very least one of my press creative, um, where I made the theory that the first Into the Spider-Verse movie was very much a critique on toxic fans, um, that it was um, about basically the idea of letting like the idea of like the perfect Peter Parker doesn't really exist. That Spider-Man can actually be anyone that changes is natural and okay for a character like Spider-Man that pure, like purest bullshit is exactly that bullshit. And you're wrong. If you don't think other people can be Spider-Man, that was the point of the first movie. Um, yeah, the the back of this, this jacket, which I, uh, I, I, I bought this uh, in 2018 or 2019 after the, uh, the Spider Verse movie came out. The back of this says, "Anyone can wear the mask." Yeah. Sorry, hold on one quick second. <laughs> okay, so anyway, sorry about that. So um, the sequel doubles down on the themes from the first movie, uh, which, as I mentioned, was about that anyone can be Spider Man. Change is natural. Change is acceptable, and you should be okay with other people taking on the mask, even if it's not your most perfect Peter Parker. Um, that was a theme behind the first one. This one doubles down pretty hard and basically points a direct finger. Uh, is everything okay there? Yeah. Uh, sorry, I'm just uh, just just texting uh, my my partner updates about what I, I I talked to you about earlier. Proceed. All right. Anyway, as I was saying, um, this one doubles down by pointing the finger at those same fans and saying you're part of the fucking problem. Um, and the reason for that is the character Miguel. <laughs> Um, who in this movie is very obsessed with maintaining canon. Like the canon has to be precise. It has to be the same for every Spider-Man. It has to be like, it has to follow a similar formula uh, or else Spider-Man can't be Spider-Man anymore. <laughs> um, but I, the helpful point in this movie is that's not true. And also points a direct finger at those who were against Miles Morales when he was first introduced in the books. Um, by Miguel saying, you're the anomaly. Everything bad happened since you came into the picture. You're not supposed to be here. You are a mistake. 
Uh, which is very cruel. Uh, which is very cruel, but like, and from a from a meta standpoint, um, that's like the entire point of that is like Mikel is the avatar of bad fans, basically. He's humorless. He hates. He's for someone who's Spider Man and, and like bringing Spider People in. He seems to hate Spider Man. <laughs> yes. Um. He he very actively says no. The canon has to be preserved. The canon has to be this way, or we lose everything. Um. All of these and like and especially points of miles like miles like you are the problem and you are the reason like and i fucking hate you because you aren't supposed to be here and like so it really doubles down on the toxic fan themes of the first film in a very aggressive way <laughs> in a way that people have a harder time kind of reconciling with in the first one you can kind of ignore it in the first film this one is much more aggressive by the themes on there <laughs> um and i think that's why it works in the broad strokes <laughs> uh because of that um your thoughts on that truth be told not not having read the actual comic books myself i i wouldn't have picked up on that that nuance um just as a a, a movie goer i i i did uh think it was very cruel and and uncaring of of uh, this seemingly self-appointed leader of all all these these spider people to single out one exactly. uh, that uh, that um, honestly was 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 the glue that that held his last team of, of spider friends together in in uh, the 2018 film. Yeah. So, uh, so I, I, as a fan of 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 Miles Morales in these movies, of of this character, I didn't like Miguel O'Hara's take, mm. uh, and uh, I saw this with my friend Carolina, and to his his scene of of uh, calling Miles mistake uh my friend said fuck that guy <laughs> yeah that's exactly what you're supposed to feel and i like the use the term you use self-appointed leader because again that ties back into what i was saying before um that the toxic fans the ones who think that people like miles don't belong uh in the canon um are also the ones who de decide that they are in charge of the fandom <laughs> um in this case quite literally um so and what's what's great about this fan Fandom, or any fandom really is that the fans can latch on to any character in the the material they like yes in 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 my case i like this miles morales i want him to grow and succeed and 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 have have the relationships uh that with the other spider people that he misses from the first movie yeah um so that's like the big broad picture of like, I think why this movie works as well as it does. Um, now talk about the more fun stuff. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, for one, the spot, um, which is so optimistically it, speaking, a D-list villain uh, in the books. He is a real character. Uh, I, I was wondering about that. Yeah, the spot is in fact a real Spider-Man villain. Uh, he's not used very often because he's kind of lame. Um, which but they they do remind him of in this in this movie oh you're just a villain of the week yeah pretty much that's kind of what the spot was conceptualized at. that's kind of what he's always been he's never really had shot for the stars so the fact that again they went with this character and they find a way to make him work in a way that quite frankly is like impressive it's very I, menacing and scary uh yeah and like again it's surprising that's what i've always been saying about comic books in general is like yes they are inherently silly um it is a person that has the powers of a spider it's silly when you actually just talk about it conceptually yeah. um some of his biggest villains involved a dude made out of sand um an older dude that likes to hunt people um a guy that dresses like a green jester um and a dude with like fucking metal arms that sounds like his name sounds like octopus um they're silly characters um inherently on its face but the execution and the story and the context you provide those characters is what gives them depth. Um, and that's why I always say, like, yes, comic books are silly. 
they're always going to be silly. They're brightly colors, they're spandex, they're ridiculous on its face. But how you that's the application of those characters is what drives it home. In fact, almost the silliness almost gives it a proper entry point so you can get to those more serious themes. Mm. Yes. Um, which is why I think people that dismiss comic books as just kid stuff is wrong, why I think people that think comics should only be serious are also wrong. Mm. Um, they're they're silly and ridiculous, but that's what makes them accessible to everybody. Mm. Which is also, I feel like, was the point of the first movie. Mm. Yes, uh, and in the in the visuals of in the first movie of introducing each of of of, of the, each spider person in in that film, they they did do so in the form of, of a comic book. Yeah, or uh, like a pig, or an anime girl, or a noir detective type, like. Any of them kind of fit into this universe, and even though they are inherently silly, you do find yourself attached to them. <laughs> yes, very much uh, so. Where, whereas in 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 this one, um, and I'm 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 certain this was an intentional choice. We, uh, or at least I, did not find myself attached to Miguel o- O'Hara. I almost felt like he was as as much of a villain and in this as as spot was even yeah. though he's even though he's a spider person yeah by design um, i would argue yes um yes um so yeah i appreciate like so i know i kind of went on a tangent there and kind of a speech but yeah that's why I was, I, my point is i like the spot i like what they're doing with them i think it was very creative and i'm impressed how they pulled it off um there's a lot there's a ton of very obscure spider-man characters that pop up in this movie not just the spider people but just some of the villains they show in like the montage sequences or actual characters i was like oh hey i didn't expect that okay sure <laughs> i guess we got the armadillo in this movie all right uh, uh they they also show some live action characterizations yeah, and 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 scenes and there there's a, a short scene with Lego Spider-Man. Yes. <laughs> Fun <laughs> fact, that was animated by a 14-year-old boy. No way! Yeah. Uh, oh, I, that is so cool! That, yeah. Uh, that... I guess he was a, like a kid on YouTube who like did short like stop-motion animation for stuff, and they saw like what he did with the Spider-Man stuff, so they called him. <laughs> um, and had a, he did the entire sequence himself. <laughs> uh, that, that is incredible. That, yeah. that was one of, of my favorite parts, this Seeing that just made me so happy. <laughs> yeah. So all the Lego stuff that was done by one kid. <laughs> That's incredible. I oh, hope good they, hustle for they, him. Uh, <laughs> I hope they they gave him uh, enough money to go to college on. <laughs> I seriously, I, I hope so. They better have. Yes. Uh, always he can go on strike too. Uh, yes, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but yeah, there's even like uh, there's even. Some of the Lord pulls in this are ridiculous. There was one there I didn't even know were real until afterwards, because apparently there really is a character called Peter Parked Car, who is <laughs> who is the Spider Car. He has eyeballs and shit. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> and he says, "I think I like uh, Chris sent me a uh, like a, like an actual comic panel with that character in there, and like what was the pun that they had on there? Because it was fucking great." Um. I try to pull it up. Oh yeah, it's like out of all the Peters in the Spider Verse, I'm the best parallel Parker. <laughs> <laughs> Again, comics are silly. It's okay for them to be silly. Uh, I mean, it 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 comes from the word comical. That is true. Um, but yeah, so there's a lot of deep lores that pulls out there, especially like um. Uh, even with the live action shots they shared every now and again, there was also even a reference to um, my personal favorite Spider-Man French uh, cartoon, which is Spectacular Spider-Man. He was one of the three that showed up in that little bubble. Um, uh, um, another uh, bubble cameo that that I liked uh, uh, that that, that kind of t- took me a second to realize was um, live action Donald Glover. Uh, yeah, it, a prowler. It it yes. was suspected or, or or hinted at that that in Spider Man Homecoming that he was the prowler, but you never saw him suited up. Yeah, no, uh, yeah, because uh, Donald Glover does play. Um, actually, Donald Glover has done had a lot of Spider Man involvement over the years. Um, 
Homecoming was like the most recent one. Like he did play Aaron Davis. He was supposed to be the Prowler, but they just never did anything with them. So I guess uh, Marvel gave Sony permission to use that because <laughs> like, all right, we're not going to do anything with this. So we might as well just take it. Uh, but here, Donald Glover, it. Donald Glover also played Miles Morales um, in like, I think the Ultimate Spider-Man cartoon, which is not a good cartoon, but he was good in it. Um, and then I, th- and there was also a campaign to get him hired on to play Spider-Man when they're making new movies too, for a little while. Um, mm. I, some say that he was, might be the partially inspiration from miles. I don't know if that's true. So I'm not going to say it is, but that's what I've heard. Um, so yeah, Donald Glover and Spider-Man have a surprisingly complex relationship. So it was, it was fun to see him in here. I'm glad to see him lean into the jokes. I like the, yes. the appearance of the, the PS4 Spider-Man. I like that too. Um, <laughs> There's also some uh, like some good good diversity picks for Spider Man people in there too. There is one that more recent creation that's in a wheelchair. I forget their name, um, but they're a more recent oh. creation. Uh, the Mary Jane Spider Man shows up for a brief second. Uh, please tell me that that the 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 Spider Cat is is a real thing. Please, please uh, tell me. I don't know if the Spider Cat is real. I know the Spider T Rex is real. <laughs> <laughs> But I, I I really loved the the spider kitty. <laughs> I I'm, want pretty sure, I'm pretty sure Spider Cat was a, a creation of the movie. Uh, the the I, cowboy Spider Man needs, needs to be on a t shirt. <laughs> I'm sure it will be now. Uh, the Spider Cowboy was real. Uh, he was totally real one. Uh, <laughs> ben Riley, who they make horrible fun of, and quite frankly deserves it. Uh, he's real. <laughs> He was the emo one that kept talking about his tragic backstory. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, I, I, I'm going to offend some Ben Riley fans. Ben Riley in the comics is a whiny little bitch. <laughs> 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 so, and he does have like an overdramatic backstory. So it's like, all right, I'm cool with this. Uh, sorry, five Ben, Ry- ben Riley stands out there. Uh, but anyway... All that's to say, uh, I, I we can really just spend the entire rest of this review just talking about cameos and shit that we like, appearances and Easter eggs we liked, but I don't want to spend all night on that. Um, I do just want to say that, again, just to bring it all home, this is a phenomenal movie. Um, so far, I think it's easy the best of the year that I've personally seen. Um, and, and, and it's a very effective cliffhanger. Uh, yes. Uh, and I am glad that, that we have less than a year until uh, beyond... The, the spider verse hopefully the writer strike doesn't fuck it up uh well uh, they've, they've already confirmed the release date for march 27th 2024 yep my hope is that since the animation is so complicated they they don't do any last minute rewrites like <laughs> so that's my hope uh, yeah it, i mean if if they want to uh land the, the or excuse me stick the landing don't change a thing keep doing what you're doing Please. Oh, and last off, where you log off, Holy Brown is great, and Spider Punk deserves the recognition that he's been getting. <laughs> uh, but anyway, yeah, phenomenal movie. Uh, you got any final yeah. thoughts, or Sarah? I loved it. If you ha- haven't seen it yet, please go see it. It's it, it's worth the money, whether you catch it on discount day, matinee, or 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 full price. All right, cool. So I think it's all we have to. Say. I mean, we, we could probably say a ton more things on there, but for the sake of time, we'll wrap up here. Uh, yes. So. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I don't even know what comes out. I think Transformers comes out this weekend. So watch that. Mm-hmm. And then the Flash comes out next week. I don't know. Like I was I grew up on Beast Wars. That was my shit. Um, and I've heard this one's fun. So I'm I'm excited to see Optimus Primal. Uh, it's not directed by, by Michael Bay. So exactly. Maybe. So it might actually be good. Uh so uh, um, I've, I've actually been, been hearing decent things about the, the Flash movie uh from I, I've been hearing mixed things. We'll see. I don't know. I don't, I I'm hesitant to support Ezra Miller, but it is what it is. Um, I want to see Michael Keaton as Batman again. So same. I'm, um, uh, yeah. Think of it as, as, as supporting Michael Keaton. That's fair. <laughs> All right. Well, anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. See y'all later.